Hello, I'm Dr. Robert Gladder, Assistant Professor of Emergency Medicine at Northwell Health and Attending Physician at Lenox Hill Hospital in New York City. 2017 was a particularly devastating year for California. The October wildfires in Northern California killed at least 44 people and caused unprecedented levels of air pollution. The current Thomas Fire in Southern California has become the largest in the state's history. The smoke and ash from these fires expose the population to the risk of inhaling particulate matter, sending many people to the emergency department. Now as the latest blaze comes gradually under control, it becomes important to contemplate the long-term health effects of wildfire smoke exposure. Here to talk to us today about this topic is Dr. John Baums, Professor of Medicine at UCSF and attending physician in the Division of Pulmonary and Critical Care Medicine at Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital. Uh, I want to talk about the effects, uh, acute effects as well as long-term effects of smoke, uh, especially from fires, and how this affects respiratory and cardiac health. Yes, well, uh, particulate matter is the primary constituent of wildfire smoke that we are concerned about in terms of health effects. There are many other uh, nasty chemicals in wildfire smoke, but the bulk of the problem is related to particulate matter. And the Particulate matter comes in different sizes, and it's the fine particulate matter uh, that can make it deep down into the lungs, and which is uh, what EPA regulates and what we're concerned about. Okay. Now, there are different sizes uh, in the 2.5 micron range, up to 10 microns. It's the 2.5 size. Is that the key one that's causing inflammation we see in lungs? Yes. Um, PM10 means it's, uh, the particles are 10 microns in diameter or less. They make it through the vocal cords into the large airways. And so they can, those particles can exacerbate asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. But the small particles, the 2.5 microns are smaller. They make it down to the deep lung. And those are the ones that have been associated with mortality, death, increased risk of death due to both respiratory problems and cardiovascular problems. But if an average person uh, is exposed to smoke, for example, this recent fire, uh, and then, you know, feels, uh, you know, somewhat overcome by the smoke, what are the impacts of that exposure in and of itself? Uh, is that enough to, you know, again, cause some inflammatory response or then lead to some cardiac or respiratory issue down the line? It all depends on the dose, uh, like almost anything in medicine. So mm. uh, if someone's near the fire, then the exposure is very heavy and they can actually be overcome uh, with carbon monoxide uh, intoxication. There was actually a woman who died in her husband's arms in the Santa Rosa mm. fire. They sought shelter in a, a swimming pool. Um, the husband made it, the wife didn't. Uh, farther away from the smoke, downwind in the Central Bay Area, for example, during the October fires, the levels were quite high, as you mentioned, unprecedented, highest uh, recorded, I believe, in the Bay Area. And most people had some eye, nose, throat irritation, but the people that are most affected by those levels are those with pre-existing heart or lung disease. Right, so people with long-term or long-standing asthma, COPD, these are the patients often that will come to the emergency department that we'll see acutely. Um, Can we expect any longer term effects other than the pulmonary effects, in other words, cardiac effects, and if you could speak to that. So PM 2.5 comes from different sources. Um, Most of the PM 2.5 that we uh, experience without wildfires comes from combustion sources such as uh, motor vehicle emissions and power plants. And that PM 2.5 has been associated with exacerbations of pre-existing heart disease and deaths due to cardiovascular disease, either myocardial infarctions or strokes. It's mm-hmm. not as clear that wildfire smoke, which is you know from wood combustion, is as toxic right. cardiovascular-wise. Respiratory-wise, there's no question, but cardiovascular effects of uh, wildfire smoke are a little bit uh, murky. So in, in a sense, does the smoke trigger inflammation that uh, accelerates atherosclerosis? Has that been established? Well, uh, other types of PM 2.5, definitely. Um, there's even some animal data with regard to wood smoke, but the epidemiology human population 
studies are conflicting with regard to wildfire smoke and cardiovascular disease. But, yes. but we do, ex I give advice to the public uh, saying that uh, we don't, we should be precautionary. People with heart disease need to protect themselves during these wildfire smoke uh, episodes. Right. So that speaks to how can we, how can the, how can the general public and even patients with uh, lung disease and heart disease protect themselves? What, are, what, are, what is your advice on the important things to do in this, in, in the case of a fire and what people should do? So even healthy people should avoid uh, exercising outside when the smoke is heavy. Uh, people with asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, heart disease should try to stay indoors, uh, should uh, keep the windows closed, should yeah. turn off ventilation systems that bring in outside air without filtration. Uh, if they have filter systems, then make sure that they're HEPA filters, high efficiency particle filters. Uh, if they have to go outside to wear an N95 or N100 mask, which are the kind of mask we you know, wear at hospitals uh, to protect us from uh, occupational transmission of tuberculosis. And those masks are available in hardware stores and home building stores and pharmacies. Now in terms of smoke cleanup, um, can you advise any specific ways uh, and safe ways to, um, to help dispose of ash? Is there a specific way to go about this? Yeah, that's tricky. Um, so in the Santa Rosa area after the October fires, there was a lot of ash uh, and in the neighborhoods, uh, Coffee Park in particular, and that ash is, is actually probably more toxic than regular wildfire uh, ash because it was a neighborhood that also burned. So there were mm -hmm. synthetic materials in the homes, there were cars, so more metal oxides and, uh, and right. synthetic uh, products of combustion. So the workers that clean up that ash have to be properly protected with uh, N95 masks. Uh, people entering their home should be wearing N95 masks. They shouldn't uh, be vacuuming without uh, special vacuums with uh, HEPA filters. Um, wherever possible to wet the ash down uh, with, with cleanup. But the bottom line is professionals are the best way to clean up after a fire. People that are trained right. are properly. I think you, you, you uh, focused on that point using um, um, water to clean up ash because of the risk of then spreading the ash if you use a vacuum or improperly use a vacuum for that matter. Um, I think that could put people at risk. Yeah, the other thing people can do, and actually uh, I think the American Lung Association actually distributed some of these, uh, are to get a good home filter device, filtration device, the standalone mm -hmm. filtration devices. Um, there are several reputable um, brands and have that running at all times when you're trying to clean up and actually, uh, if possible, more than one in a, in a home. Right. So in a general sense, how long after exposure can health effects appear after this fire? I mean, are we looking at five years, 10 years? Can you in some way uh, speculate on that? Well, you know, fortunately, uh, while the exposures are heavy, they're usually only for a few days. Uh, so we mostly worry about acute effects and not long-term effects. The people we have to worry about long-term effects are, use, are the firefighters, actually, uh, mm -hmm. especially wildland firefighters because they can't wear the self-contained breathing apparatus that structural uh, urban firefighters wear. And, you know, they, they're on the fire line for a long time, you know, 12-hour shifts, uh, and mm -hmm. days in a row, uh, and then they do it over the entire fire season, and some of them do it for years at a time. So the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health is actually instituting a long-term study, um, primarily to uh, see if there's increased risk of cardiovascular disease and uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and cancer even. Now, mm -hmm. people that are exposed even heavily from one of these California wildfires uh, are not likely to have long-term effects. There's not enough exposure to uh, chronically affect heart or lung disease and certainly not cancer. However, there are some exceptions. Somebody with asthma could have a, a, a sort of permanent worsening of, of their asthma with a heavy exposure because they get so much inflammation in their airways that it 
basically uh, moves their asthma into a worse state. And on, on one of the last questions, can you estimate the amount of carbon dioxide that was released from the result of this blaze? Has there been any data indicating that? I think people have looked at this. Um, I'm not going to be able to quote numbers, but as you alluded to early, earlier in the conversation, the amount of uh, carbon dioxide that's emitted is a lot. So um, mm -hmm. it almost, in some ways, uh, wipes out all the efforts we've been doing in California to have clean energy and clean vehicles to have these catastrophic wildfires. Right, and that's, that, that brings that to the point is that in, in the sense of climate change and you know doing all we can, these fires are devastating and certainly compound our, our, our efforts to help you know combat the situation. Yeah, Governor Brown, uh, I think, said it well um, after a few days of the Thomas fire. He said, this is the new norm uh, for us and that we have to do all we can to uh, both try to better prepare communities for these catastrophic mm -hmm. fires, but also to double our uh, efforts with regard to uh, climate change. And uh, I mean, he's right. <laughs> Right, and I think that you know, controlling fires is part of climate change now, as you allude to. Well, I want to thank you very much for your time. This has been very, very beneficial. Uh, uh, certainly, the fires have affected so many people in California, and to really put this uh, in perspective has been uh, immensely beneficial. Thank you again. I, I appreciate your time. Thank you.